The Quantum Dynamic Price Pivots Indicator is one of those indicators that appears at a superficial level to be very simple. And indeed, to some extent, this is true. However, beneath this simplicity, the indicator can be used in a myriad of powerful ways when considering price action on the chart. And indeed, within Quantum, we often refer to it as the Swiss Army Knife of Indicators because it has so many different uses. Now, if we start at the basic level, the pivot indicator appears on the chart either as a little yellow arrow pointing down or as a yellow arrow pointing upwards. And what the indicator is doing is purely basing its trigger decision on the price action. And it's based over a three candle period. If we get what we call a pivot high, in other words, where we have a small arrow pointing downwards, then what this is showing is that within the price action, the candle with the arrow overhead has a higher high and a higher low than the two candles on either side. Equally, to the downside, where we have what we call a pivot low, in other words, the little yellow arrow is pointing upwards, then the low of that particular candle is lower than the two on either side, and the high of that candle is also lower than the two candles either side of it. So what the pivot is doing at a very basic level is showing us some short-term price reversal. When the market has been moving high and we get a pivot high, then it's showing us that some price weakness is coming into the market. And conversely, where we have a pivot low with the arrow pointing upwards, then it's telling us that we have some price strength coming to the market. And this is purely based on the price action over those three candles, nothing else. So how do we use this indicator? Well, first of all, as I said earlier, at a very simple level, it's giving us a heads up to some minor reversals in price action. In other words, changes in sentiment on the price chart. So that's at the first level. But you can use the indicator in many different ways. And one of the most powerful is in a helping you to identify congestion phases of price action on the chart, but to see them revealed dynamically. Because understanding where you are in your journey in terms of the price action will then help you to make decisions either about getting into the market, staying in the market, or closing out. And understanding and interpreting the price action is one of the key components of successful trading. It's all very well seeing congestion phases drawn on charts where the lines are drawn historically, and indeed the same applies to trend lines. We'll look at those in a moment, because equally, the little pivot indicator can help there too. So looking at charts historically is all very well, but what you actually need to see is price action building dynamically and giving you clues as to what is happening and where you are in the price journey. Now this is an example. We're on a 15 minute chart here for the dollar CAD. If we start at the left, we've seen a rally. Price actions moved higher. And then we have our first pivot high formed. So we've had a little down arrow come in. And we're expecting a little bit of a reversal, which duly arrives and is promptly followed by a pivot low. Now, at that point, you don't know where the price action is going next. It could be that this was simply a minor reversal in the longer term a rally higher. And the next few bars took off and we saw the trend develop fast with the price action rising accordingly. You don't know at that stage. All you know is that we've had a pause. We've had a pivot high formed 
and a pivot low. So we know there's some sort of pause point coming. We're not sure if it's a short term pause in a longer term rally or whether we're moving into a phase of congestion. The price action continues in a narrow spread phase and then we duly see a pivot low formed. Now what's that telling us? Well, it's telling us that we've had uh, that it's building the floor of potential congestion. In other words, it's defining the platform of support in a possible congestion phase and it's just giving us a heads up as to where we are in the journey. We then see another pivot low formed. Not quite at the same level, a little higher this time, but nevertheless, we've not seen a breakout in price action. We still have our pivot high defining the upper level and we're now building our floor. We then get a further pivot low form. So now we know we're in a congestion phase. We've got this extended floor building. The ceiling has yet to be put in place, but then it duly arrives with a further pivot. Now at this point, let me just add now let me just say at this point that technical analysis is not a science, it is an art form and there is a degree of leeway when looking at these regions and how they're building. But the pivots are giving you a heads up, they are defining this price region for you if you like. So we then get the pivot high formed, we then see another pivot low form. So we know we're in strong congestion at this phase and what we're now waiting for is a breakout to develop. We have our ceiling in place and we've got our floor pretty much defined by the pivots as well. And then we have a further sequence of a pivot high and two pivot lows until ultimately the market moves on and away from this region. And we then move into a slightly higher level of congestion. We start with a pivot high, another pivot high develops so we know we've got some weakness at that level. The market reverses, we've got a pivot low, so we're expecting the market to rally a little bit off that point, which it does. We get a pivot high, and then a further pivot high, slightly higher up. A further phase of congestion, no more pivots at that point. And then we duly break higher to the upside. So we've now moved away from that congestion phase up to our third level of congestion. And once again, it's a similar pattern. The market has rallied, we've had a pivot high formed. And at that point, again, it could just be a pause point in the rally moving strongly higher. But what happens is we get another pivot high to slightly lower level, duly followed by a pivot low, then another pivot high and a pivot low. And what these pivots are constantly helping to define is the dynamic nature of the price action as it builds through these phases. As the congestion phase builds, so we get pivot highs, pivot lows, helping us to define the ceiling and floor of these congestion phases. So it's a great little tool for really just defining the price action dynamically as it's building in real time. It is just telling you where we are seeing strength, short term strength, short term weakness and applying our knowledge of price action to help us understand where the market is at that precise point. We then finally move through that last piece of price action where the congestion phase is and we ultimately break to the downside. So our floor and our ceiling are in place and we've moved to the downside and broken away. And of course, using this indicator, you'll be using it in conjunction with several other indicators. Perhaps you're maybe uh, looking at uh, volume price analysis. So any break away from these congestion phases, you will be considering volume and the associated price action for confirmation of the move away from a congestion phase. And congestion phases are so important because that's where trends are built. Uh, many traders find them uh, frustrating, but they are the building blocks of price action. And the longer a congestion phase develops, then generally speaking, the more pronounced will the, be the trend as it builds and moves away. And it's just a question of being patient and waiting for that to be confirmed. And it's the pivots which will define and help to define the floor and ceiling, but they'll do it dynamically. This is not a historical tool. The pivots will come in 
on the price action and as soon as you see one forming it will then start to give you clues certainly when the second or third is formed whether this is simply a pause in a longer term trend higher or indeed you're moving into a congestion phase. So that's one way of using the pivots, a very powerful and a great way to use this very simple indicator, which is, as we say, the Swiss army knife of trading. Now let's look at another example. And this time we're going to look at a trend. Now this is an example from a weekly chart for the EuroCAD. But the same principles apply whether you're looking at a one minute chart or a weekly chart or a monthly chart. And whether you're a swing, a trend trader or an intraday scalping trader, exactly the same principles apply as indeed they did to the congestion phases. And this is another way where we can use the power of the pivots indicator. And what we're looking for is in this example to confirm that we are actually in a trend. Now, if we start at the bottom left of the chart again, the market has rallied and we've got a pivot high delivered. So we're expecting some short term weakness, which duly arrives. The pivot low then appears. Now we're expecting the market to rally off the low, which it does. And it continues higher. Now, at that point, you might expect one of two things. You're either expecting this to, to develop the trend further or, as we saw earlier, you might see a pivot high come in and we move into a congestion phase. But clearly on this occasion, the market has moved through the level of the old pivot and delivered a pivot high at a higher level. So this looks more like a development of the trend rather than a congestion phase. And that's really confirmed when we get our fourth pivot here, the pivot low. So we started with a pivot high, then we had the pivot low, then we had the pivot high at the higher level, and now we've got the pivot low arrived, which is also at a higher level to the previous pivot low. So in other words, what the pivot indicator is doing for us, it is building the trend dynamically. It is telling you, yes, we are in a trend because we now have a pivot high, which is higher than the previous, and we've got a pivot low, which is higher than the previous. Now the market's moving higher. We've got another pivot low gone in, again, higher than the previous two. The market continues. And up we go to the next level where we have a pivot high. Now we've got three pivot highs in a line there, rising, and we've got a pivot low to the downside. So we've now got four pivot lows all higher than the previous one. So this is confirming we are in a trend. The price action is in trend and we're seeing that trend built dynamically. And then on we go. It would be very easy to draw trend lines here and say, oh, look at this trend. But what the pivot is actually doing is it's delivering this in real time. And as long as you understand the price action and what the pivot's telling you, it's really helping you to describe the price action and explain where you are in the price journey. The price action then continues higher. We don't have any more pivots on the way up. We're just continuing higher. And then we get a price that we get a, a pivot high to the top there. And the market reverses off that pivot. We start our move to the downside. What do we see to the downside? We get a pivot low delivered. Are we moving into congestion phase? We don't know at that stage. We don't see a pivot high formed. The market continues lower. Then we get another pivot low form. So it looks as though we're in a strong downtrend. The market rallies. We've got a pivot high. At that point, are we moving into a congestion phase? We could be. We don't know at this point. If we were, what we'd be looking for is a pivot low somewhere in the region of the previous pivot low. The market duly goes through there. So it looks as though we're not in congestion. We're continuing in downwards trend. The next pivot low arrives well below the other two. Then we move into a congestion phase. The price action has a pretty solid floor of support in there. It's not, uh, it's not breaking through. We've got no pivots formed. We've got a pivot high formed a little bit lower than the previous pivot high, but certainly suggesting and confirming that we are in a, an extended congestion phase. So what we're waiting for now is a breakout 
We didn't see any more pivots formed in that particular piece of price action, although there could well have been, uh, but none were delivered and the market duly broke through the floor and on down to form another pivot low and a continuation of the trend. Another short phase of price action and then on we went into what looks like another extended phase of congestion. We've yet to see a pivot high confirmed on that region. We could see in the next time frame as the market unfolds next week that uh, we break lower or we get some pivots formed to further confirm where we are in the price action. But that's using the pivot as a dynamic indicator to help us define whether we are in a trending market dynamically or whether we are moving into a congestion phase. It's a very simple indicator. It's immensely powerful. Yes, it gives you a heads up on the short term price action, whether sentiment is changing, whether the price action has reversed from bullish to bearish or bearish to bullish. But in addition to that, it does so many other things. It helps define congestion phases dynamically and it will also help to define trends as they're building in real time, trends to the upside, trends to the downside. I hope you've enjoyed watching the video. It's a great little indicator. As we say, it's the Swiss Army knife of trading. So why not grab one and pop it in your toolkit today? See you soon and bye for now.